Oh, we're going to start again, y'all. Thank you. Because this is such a touchy subject, I am going to ask the universe to come in, if you all don't mind. I know some of you believe that there is no God and there is no universe and you are God and all of that. And I respect all of that. But right now, with what we're getting ready to talk about, whoever it is that you believe in, we're going to call them in right now. Because if this doesn't apply to you, it may apply to somebody in your life that you may need to help. Mother, Father, Creator, we're grateful and we thank you for the opportunity to share this word that you placed on my heart. Thank you for everyone that has been through molestation. This is for every child who did not have a voice to be able to say, I'm being molested. This is for every mother who started to date a man because she wanted to have a father in the home for her children and didn't realize what was going on. This is for every little boy who was touched by a father, a stepfather, the grandfather, the um, boyfriend of the mother, who now hates women and goes through women like he goes through draws because of the hurt and the anger of not being protected by his mother. Ancestors, guide my mouth, guide my words, show me, protect my family even as I share on today. Ashe, Amin Ra, Mayat. So even Shimi Imhotep, uh, Imhotep to all of my family members, I want to share with you today on the subject, are you dating a pedophile? Now, when I woke up this morning, that was not my interest. That was not my intention. That was not what I planned to wake up and do and come on <laughs> social media to do this morning. It wasn't in my bag. I have people that are here because I'm doing a retreat. Some of them will be here for a week to have different healing modalities done. So about a week ago, I was doing a relationship reading for a sister and I saw some things. I said, oh no, she didn't ask me that. That woman came to me for a relationship reading. I'm going to give her exactly what she asked for. I'm not going any further because, you see, when you are a reader, when you are in tune with spirit and you share with people based on what spirit has given you, you are responsible for that person that you've read for. So somebody could get a reading and be driving, and if what I give them is devastating, to the point that they end up having an accident, then that blood is on my hands. So sometimes I will give you just what you asked for because you may not be in a position to receive the rest of it. And I am spiritually accountable for what I read, for what I see. And so sometimes I'll just turn around, I'll get off of reading and I'll start crying and I'll start petitioning the universe for the children and for the things that I see that I could not say. And so when I finished with that reading, Spirit said, you need to start doing pedophile readings. I said, what? And see, you have to understand, I was trained by some of the very best, pardon me, Facebook, let me, yeah. I was trained by some of the best readers on this side of the continent. So I'm not a game when it comes to reading, okay? You are gonna get the truth, but I also am extremely spiritually in tune, so I'm not going to put stuff out there on you and leave you out there. And so Spirit has been talking to me for over a week about doing pedophile readings. And I'm gonna be honest, I said, uh-uh, I'm not doing that because somebody trifling in the conscious community will say, oh, she trying to hustle people. Baby, listen, the conscious community is not what's paying my bills. No, no. And so I've understood that I am the person called to deal with the things we keep sweeping up under the rug. 
I understand that I'm the woman that's gone through many of the crazy things in my childhood that I've gone through because somebody has to go through certain things in order to be able to talk about it. You see, a man can't tell me so much, but so much about having a baby because you can read about it. You can get degrees in it. But at the end of the day, my brother, you can't lay down and have a baby. You don't know what it feels like to have a baby kicking in your womb. You don't know what it is like to feel like to have a baby die in your womb. So I appreciate your information. But if you ain't been where I've been, you may not be able to talk to me about what is being said. So on today, beloved, we're having the conversation about are you dating a pedophile? Because Spirit talked to me about doing those readings and I wasn't comfortable. So the young lady is here with me today who's going to be here for a week doing healing all week long. And this ended up being a part of her healing. So I'm going to slide over. I'm going to let her share with you what she shared with me this morning with no names, but the full scenario. And as she was speaking, spirit said, now, do you hear me? Now, do you believe me? Now, will you do what I've asked you to do, queen? And I said, yes. And so I'm going to have my sister come over and share with you all. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to share with you the whole situation and share my testimony so that you better understand so you can protect your children. Because see, many of you all were not protected like me. Many of you all were not protected from predators as children like me. So we're going to have that conversation today on Facebook Live. And my prayer is that many of you all who need counseling, many of you all who need help, many of you all who hate people because of that pain that's inside of you, who cannot trust good men in relationships because you have been molested as a little girl by a man who was supposed to be an upstanding family member. Many of you all who as little girls were molested by female family members like I was, like my mama was, and knew you better not tell nobody. Because after all, we in church and you don't talk about that. You don't talk to the family about that. So sis, slide over and talk to the people. Share with them what you shared with me this morning so that they will understand Image up, everyone. Thank you, Queen. Um, this is a difficult topic, and it is not easy to share with anybody when you've gone through something like this. Um, my name is Harmony, and I am here for a week to do healing with Queen. I'm so excited about it. Um, and so naturally, conversations are coming up. We're talking about a number of different things as it relates to my healing, but also as it relates to the calling on my life to be a healer. And I've had people come to me and share things with me that I'm like, I don't know what to do with this information. I don't know what to do to help them. And so I'm just so grateful that I have Queen in my life as my teacher to be able to work with me and through these situations to help me understand the need that is there and that there is help available to these young women who I work with and to some of the older women that I work with as well. So basically what I shared with Queen is that there's a young lady back home. I'm from, originally from Sacramento, California, and I moved to New Jersey about almost two years ago. And so I've been away from family and friends, but Facebook allows me to stay connected. And I am so excited that I am a part of the Sacred Medicine Woman Mystery System course for fall 2017. And I added a bunch of you know women from my hometown, like, man, sis, y'all gotta get in this. And one of them, I noticed that she hasn't posted. I noticed that she hasn't responded. She hasn't said anything. And Queen does a great job of explaining the process. You know, you're going to go through an interview. Um, and she mentioned that a part of the interview was that you would be getting a reading done. So I reached out to my sister and I was like, you know, hey, are you, are you interested? Are you getting, you know, the interviews are coming up. 
she didn't respond to me. So I reached out to her by phone and I just said, you know, hey, I haven't seen you making any moves online. You're in the group. You know, what's up? And she said, oh, I didn't know she was going to be doing readings. Well, in my mind, I have nothing to hide and I don't want anything to be information or knowledge that I don't have to live uh, accordingly. So I want all the information. A reading doesn't scare me or bother me, but it did for her. And I asked her, well, sis, you know, why is that a deal breaker for you? And she said, well, because the man that she is currently seeing right now, he's from Haiti. Um, he told her, don't get any more readings because originally she got a relationship reading um, after meeting him. And in that relationship reading, there was a concern about her children being around him. And the person who did the reading left it at that. They left it at that. So she toiled with, well, what does that mean? And, and what are they talking about? They didn't go any further. Um, so she just kind of sat with it for a while and then she started to do some research. Then she started to pluck away at some of the details. Then she started to ask him more questions and she got several readings done that consistently, because she was asking for a relationship reading, that's all she asked for. They kept saying, you know, be careful around this person and particularly around, you know, having them around your children. That could mean anything. Mm -hmm. So when she kind of decided to sit down and have a talk with him about it, she threw some things out there. Has anything ever come up? Have you ever done anything? And he did tell her something that she was not prepared to accept. He told her that back when he was in Haiti, he was 16 years old. He was accused of um, molesting his sister, molesting his sister and her friend who lived next door. And for a while, he denied it. You know, the family wanted to press charges. They wanted him to, you know, do some time for it. By the time he was 19, he was accused a second time uh, of the same thing. And this time he said that he thought that the girl was older. He thought she was over 18. And he thought that, you know, there was obviously something wrong. These situations keep coming up where he's being accused of this. And so his family thought it would be best for him to leave. And so he, he uh, came to New York. He changed his life. He got into spirituality. Now, this is a conscious brother. He felt that he was healed and delivered of all of that and that there was no need to speak of it or talk about it or bring it up. And so he's just moved on with his life, according to his testimony to her, and not looked back because that was the old him and that person has died. And so now, you know, he's worked in youth programs. He's been coached. He's, you know, he's, he's been a coach of youth programs and sports. Um, he has a history, a job history, employment history of working with children. That is what became of his life after these accusations and things happened in Haiti. He continued to gravitate towards environments with children all the way up until her meeting him at a boys and girls club where her mm. children go. And so now she's been dating this guy and it's been about over a year and she really believes he's the one. And she does want to have a father for her children because this is not their biological father. He's a conscious brother. He has a lot of respect. He has a reputation. People speak so highly of them, but they don't know about what happened back in Haiti. They have no idea what kind of life he led previously before he became the man that she now knows, before he became the man that they know. And so when she told me this, I was like, well, if you got a reading done and you asked specifically on this subject, wouldn't you feel the burden removed from you that you don't have to continue to question and be afraid? She wouldn't do it. She said he told her not to get any more readings. It was destroying their relationship. It was destroying their relationship. And she said to me, well, can he be healed from that? Can he be delivered? I mean, he's moved on with his life. He's gone through healing and different courses. And, you know, he's a practitioner in certain, you know, modalities. And he helps people now. So he's different, right? That was his past life. Is, is it still in him? Is it possible that that spirit of pedophilia is still in him? I didn't have an answer for her. I said, whoa. I'm going to need to consult, you know, a spiritual leader, a spiritual teacher on this. Because everything in me was saying, run, was saying, no, isn't it obvious? How? Who? But, but this sister, my sister in the community actually believes that it's better not to tell anybody. 
It's better to just, you know, that was his old life. It was in a whole nother country. You know, he was a different person. He's now in his early 40s. You know, it was a long time ago. He's a good man now. He's a wholesome brother now. He's a conscious brother now. He's a Chemite. Hmm. Doesn't that count for something? He's changed his life. He's trying to become a priest. He's trying to become a priest. And so I said, you know what? If this is what's keeping you from getting a reading, then something inside mm -hmm. and inside mm -hmm. is telling you mm -hmm. that there might be something more. Mm -hmm. And you are allowing your children to be alone with him. You're leaving your children with him on a consistent basis. And now they're thinking about moving in together. So I want all of my sisters to know and anyone else out there to know that if you have that tug, if you have that pause, that question, that doubt in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, then half of the answer is already there. And you do need a pedophile reading. You do need it to be that specific. You can't ditch and dodge around the question. You can't just get a relationship reading. It's not enough. You need to ask the real questions, especially when somebody has admitted to you, when they've told you, oh, I was accused of that. You know, there were some circumstances, but that was my past. That, that was back in the day. I'm a different person now. So I'm going to let Queen jump back on and deal with it further. But I just I had to share that with her. And I was like, Queen, what do I say to her? She needs to be in this course. But she is stopping her own healing in order to protect the illusion that she has that this man will be able to provide everything that she needs for her and her children. And how could she not? Mm -hmm. She's been abandoned by their, their uh, biological father. Mm -hmm. She has no help. Mm -hmm. She has four children. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's out there struggling with that circumstance, and like Queen said, it's not always just men. Mm -hmm. There are women out there who are yes. doing this too. Yes. God, yes. So yes. you, if you feel that in your spirit, that you need to ask a specific question, am I dating a pedophile? Please, please, for the sake of those babies, if for nothing else, please ask the question. Please get the reading. Please have that clarity. It is the right thing to do so that you can move forward fully knowing how to continue to protect your children. And trust me, I know that when this sister gets the reading, if, if it is in her to do it, when she finally stops toiling with it at night, when she finally stops looking around the corner and listening and being worried and concerned every time he's around her children, when she has that courage to get that reading done, I think all of us who have heard this story now pretty much know what it's going to say. And if that means she has to sacrifice and not receive any more money from him, mm -hmm. not receive helps with getting the children to school, mm -hmm. helps with spending time with them or taking over, you know, their care or spending time with her, holding her at night. We all get it as women, the need and the desire for a companion. But at what cost? At what cost? So I thank you for allowing me to share this with you. And I hope that when you hear Queen's story... <laughs> When you hear her testimony, as she is so graceful to share that information with us, it's private, it's painful, it's not cute. I originally, speaking to the sister, I was like, have you called the police? I mean, have you done a background check? I mean, you know, what else can you do? You need to know. And to, to know that it was more important to her to save what she thinks is her soon-to-be family. He's going to propose, you know, any man, I know it's going to happen. You could be marrying a pedophile. Yes. That is a lifelong curse you are putting on your children to have to grow up with this man as their father. The things that you are now subjecting them to, that for the rest of their lives, once these kinds of infractions happen, they have to be healed for the rest of their lives. The work becomes a burden that now they have to live with this and we have to wait as healers for them to finally get to that place where they can say something, where they can tell somebody. But as you know, it's not easy because it is swept under the rug. People are told not to talk about it. They are not believed. And especially because she's going to know from the beginning that she already knew. Come on, y'all. We got to do better. 
So again, thank you for allowing me to share this with you. I'm going to turn it back over to Queen. And I just, again, I encourage anyone out there who is listening, who sees this video, don't wait. Don't wait. Don't let this stand in, in between you and your healing. Don't let this stand in between you and the safety of your children. They deserve that from you. And you deserve that as well. So thank you again. Peace. And so, beloveds, as you see, it's as real as it gets up in here. It is as real as it gets. And so, it's real deep. And I want to apologize to my family members. Because <laughs> uh, I got a ton of cousins on Facebook. And I'm the oldest of most of the cousins. So, many of my cousins are, I got little cousins that are probably between 15 and 30. So, I don't know what you went through. I just know what happened to me. And I know that I blocked a lot of it out. And as I got older and started to understand, it started making sense to me. So I literally blocked it out. And once I got to a spiritual point at about 21, to be able to, can you save this? I missed most of it. Yes, sis, it's gonna be, Facebook will let me save it. Instagram, it'll show up in my stories for a day and then they take it off. So you can go over to my Facebook page. You can go over uh, and you can see it. I'll have it posted up there. So yes. So um, to my cousins, to my family, if this is embarrassing to you, I apologize. But this is a part of the anointing on my life. And so it's what happened. Do a reading on me. I ain't got no reason to lie. It's what happened. So I started being molested at the age of four by a female family member, okay? And I blocked it out. I blocked it out. It came out in my behavior growing up in that I didn't do females. I didn't cling to females. I didn't stay near females. All of my friends were dudes. I told you all, the strong male figures in my life were my father's frat brothers, Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. There is nothing like those brothers. They were my big brothers. They were my daddy's brothers. All of the, the Masonic family, that's who helped raise me. So I didn't have no little female friends. The girls that lived on the street where I was, we were cool, but I didn't have no real, real tight. Junior high, high school, my best friends were males. I surrounded myself with big brothers. So I wasn't no hoe, not then. <laughs> there was a hoe period, but I wasn't a hoe at that time. I made it so that I was always protected by male energy. And because I had blocked it out and I didn't know anything was wrong, I was far. So I didn't, I'm not going to cry. I didn't know anything was wrong because yeah, my mother talked to me about good touch, bad touch from a man touching me. She never told me about good touch, bad touch from another woman touching me and from a family member. She just never told me. So as I started going through counseling at 21, I was able to unlock that. See, spirit is so wonderful because they will protect your mind from certain things that you can't handle. And I then was able to talk to my mother and she said that the same female family member started molesting her at the age a four. And my mother allowed me to go stay with this person. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? You know, you know. And so my mother and I already had a strained relationship as it was. That made it worse. But, and my mother did not process what happened to her well. My mother had three nervous breakdowns from the time I was two to the time I was nine. 
So I would get sent to stay with this family member while my mother was in Roanoke Psychiatric. See, I don't have no problems. You can go back and search what I'm saying, baby. All this happened in real life. And so I didn't know it was wrong. I just didn't know. And so it became a real, real deep, deep peace. And I will never forget, I was 16 years old. I was the lady table master. <laughs> And uh, so I had my little DJ thing going on and I was a rapper. So I had my hair cut. I was in the 10th grade at Patrick Henry High School and I had my hair cut like salt and pepper. So I had a curly kit that they used to call and it was asymmetric. And I used to shave the back of my hair down. And so my mother, in order to mask her pain, and see, I, keep in mind, I didn't know this. At 16, I didn't know what she had been through. I blocked out what I had been through. But I didn't have, I was a nerd. I'm getting straight A's, A, B's, getting scholarship offers, da, 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 da. I wasn't into boys. I had male friends around, but I just wasn't into dudes. I wasn't into chicks. Let me, make, let me be real clear. What never, ever, that didn't happen. Never, ever, never, ever. But I just... Like some of my little friends that were getting pregnant and all of that, that wasn't what I was doing. Wasn't where I was. So I masked my pain by throwing myself into student government and all of these different extracurricular activities and keeping my grades up and all of that and singing and playing the piano. I kept my mind distracted, not knowing that all that was a mask. And so, I'll never forget my mother saying, why do you keep shaving your hair down like that? I said, because that's how salt and pepper got their hair down. You know, I'm about to be a rapper. And so she said, are you a dyke? I said, what? I don't never see no boys around here for you. And I'm sitting here like, did my mama ask me that? Am I a let me, let me, just in case there's any questions, never, 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 never. Had a two-year whole period in college. That was it. That was it. Then I went deep into Jesus and then, you know, got real, real holy. No. But see, she knew what I ain't know. So that's where that question came from. I ain't had no idea. I'm just looking at her like, so I need to have a whole bunch of dudes all over me. I need to have a bunch of bastard babies, which you said I better not bring in your house. Later, I found out why it was. So I'm doing this one for all of the little Alicia's who didn't have anybody to speak up. See, if my daddy had had a relationship reading, he would have never married my mama. My daddy is a stand-up man. He is that dude. So when my mother said she was pregnant, my dad married her. That's what he did. He dropped out of med school and married her. That wasn't my mom's plan. My mom's plan was, I'm going to get pregnant by this med student so I can marry me a doctor. She wasn't expecting him to be a stand-up dude quite like that. Okay? So when I found out I was so angry with this family member, I couldn't believe it. And I was deep, deep deep, deep in church. And I was in one of them holiness Pentecostal, no makeup, no earrings, no pants, no, 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 just no. Hallelujah. Every day in church, six days a week. And I thought that that would mask the pain. So that helped me to forgive my mother and to forgive this family member and all of that. All of that was a mask. I did not forgive anybody. I was scared that God would not forgive me. Jesus would not forgive me. I would go to hell if I didn't forgive them. All of that was trapped up inside of me, bottled up as hatred. So I began to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And so then I gained weight. And even in me gaining weight, then I went through my little two-year whole period that I mentioned and got pregnant and had an abortion and then had fibroid tumors. All of this happened in succession. So 
Queen, I appreciate your story, but how do I know if I'm dating a pedophile? There's no list. There's no list. There are things that are inappropriate. And let me talk on those things first. Now, it is inappropriate. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't do this for likes. So I could care less if you like what I say. I'm queen neat. I'm just as straight up as it gets. I'm just real as it gets. So I don't care if you decide to unfriend me, unfollow me, whatever. We about to have this conversation on today. It is inappropriate for you to bring a man around your children when you have not done a criminal background check on him. First of all, he may be a financial flim flam artist. Okay, so you finally got your credit good. You got your nice little house. You got all your stuff in a row. And here he shows up. Okay, all you know about a man is what he tells you. Brothers, all you know about a woman is what she tells you. You don't even know if that's that person's real name. Most of us don't even check ID. So if you do a criminal background check, you may be checking according to the name that they give you. You don't know how many times this has been done before. And so depending on what state they did it in, it may show up on a criminal backgrounds check and it may not. But see, just because they got a clear criminal background check, that means they're not a pedophile. It means they did not get caught. That's what that means. You are not that horny that you just absolutely got to go lay down with this brother before you get that done. See, sister, I've got students and clients who are under 30 walking around with AIDS right now. College educated professional women, professional men who laid down with somebody because they was dating. I'm feeling her vibe. Queen, she was wonderful. She was saying all the right things. She told me I didn't have to wear a condom because she wanted us to be close. And that brother has AIDS right now. And he's an attorney. He's an attorney. Did all the right things. He said, Queen, I had a ring on layaway for her. And I told her because she was special, I wanted to wait. I didn't understand why she kept wanting to throw herself at me. I knew we was having a good vibe, but I wanted to make it special. So I flew her to this island and we made love the first time there. And the first time there, that had to be when I got it because I started seeing symptoms about six weeks later. So the brother did the right things. And so he's taken 37 pills a day now because he trusted her and she knew she had it. She knew she had it. I have students now that have herpes, that have AIDS, that have um, herpes, genital warts that they are unable to get rid of, that a little shot didn't get rid of because they trusted a brother's story and they dated him and had unprotected sex with people that they had had no sexual history done on. See, we're so afraid of looking prudish we don't regard our bodies as sacred space. We don't regard our bodies as sacred space. I don't want to run him off, queen. I don't want to scare him, queen. He seemed good. It feels good in my spirit. Your heart is deceitful and wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? Your heart wants what your heart wants. So, I don't never do my own relationship readings. I have readers that I go to because I want it to work. So my energy is going to throw that thing off. You need to get a reading from somebody who don't have a horse in the race. That's why I tell people, text me. I will do a relationship reading. I don't know that dude. I don't know you. 
So I don't have no horse in the race. All I want is for you not to be another one of those testimonies. I want us to stop sleeping with people till before we know them. It takes at least 90, 90 days to six months to get to know somebody. You need to see how does he handle his business. You see, if some of us had just waited, we'd have found out that he was married. We'd have found out he don't work where he says he works. The universe would have set it up so that some of his exes would have ended up calling us and saying, girl, no, I'm walking around with warts in my body right now because of him. Don't do that. Don't do that. He know what to, you got to keep in mind. Your enemy knows what you like and what you lack. And it will come in the form of a male or a female that you want. This is not a game, people. This is serious. Family. And so if you don't regard your body as sacred space, you ain't regarding your kids as sacred space. Some of us are so desperate to have a father for our child. Please press the share button. Because if I don't save but one little girl from getting molested, if I don't save but one little boy from getting molested because the light bulb went off in her mama's head, then this was worth it because this wasn't what I woke up planning to do this morning. But before you even introduce that joker to your children, and get their hearts all open up. Oh, we might be getting ready to get a new daddy. You owe it to your kids because you're about to bring that energy into your house. You're about to bring that energy into the safe space that your children have. And you have not had a criminal background check done on him. You have not had a sexual history. Sis, if he's the one, he has no problem at all taking a test to see if he has any diseases. He has no problem getting a criminal background check done. He has no problems with you getting a reading done. And don't just get a reading from me. Get three readings. If my reading comes back that there is a propensity. Not that he's even touched a baby. Honey, I go through and I read it. Has he ever? Is there something in his bloodline that causes a propensity to like little girls? Let me tell you something. Sometime when your man tell you you have to get a Brazilian, so you have to have all your, your pubic hair shaved off, sometimes that's a sign. Now, yeah, brothers don't want hair all up in their mouth. I get that, okay? But when they constantly, oh, you got to wax that. Oh, you got to wax that. Oh, you got to wax that. Let a little light bulb come on. Because see, that's how a little girl looks. A little girl has no pubic hairs down there. Now, I'm not saying every brother that wants you to have no hair is a pedophile. Don't go tell that lie on me. That's not what I said. But pay attention to that. That's all I'm saying. Get your dumb behind a reading. Oh my God, get your behind a reading, sis. Your kids are worth it. Because if he touches your kids, you can't make it right. You can't buy enough Playstations. You can't say enough I'm sorry. You can't send them on enough vacations to make it right. When all you had to do was get a reading. That's all you had to do. That's all you had to do. You talking about you want to be in a divine partnership. Do you even know what's living on the other side of your bed? Do you understand? Why would you shack up with anybody? I want to see if it's going to work. Why don't you get a reading so that you can avoid all of that emotional stress and strain and bringing that person's energy all up in your body. We don't have to go through some of the stupid stuff we go through. And I'm telling you what I know firsthand. If I had gotten readings, I'd have never got married. Never. But I was marrying somebody who was in a belief system that said you don't do readings. So I took my altars down. 
and I didn't do the readings. And four months later, I got divorced. So I want you not to go through the hurt I went through because I didn't have to go through it. That's why the universe sits readers in our midst. This is why we used to go to the shaman. This is why we used to have arranged marriages. And now we call that archaic. We don't, it's not archaic. The shaman would sit down and would lay his hands on one woman's belly or her hands and lay her hands on another woman's belly when they knew it was a male child and a female child. And what they would ask was for a past lives reading. According to what this little boy has been through, will he be able to be a provider, a protector, and the priest over the home for this little girl right here? Will this be a good match? What type of children will they have together? Will they make a god or will they make a serial killer? What will they make? Because you're responsible for your children. You are responsible for the children that you bring into this earth realm. You're never just that horny. Well, queen, I laid down one day and I woke up the next day and I was pregnant because you were irresponsible. That's your irresponsibility. How many generations do we have to keep on being pregnant at 15? Why? Why? Because you want to be your child's friend? We already know what it is. Why is your daughter dating at 15? Ain't nothing else left to do but screw. We gonna go to the movies. We gonna go to the mall. After we do the movies and we do the mall, then we gonna screw. What else is there to do? We're not having Bible study. We're not studying African spirituality. What do you think they gonna do? And then they come to your house pregnant and you got the nerve to be shocked. He got my daughter pregnant. No, you got your daughter pregnant. You set her up. She needs to be in school. She needs to be studying, preparing for her future. What is she going to do with a boyfriend at 14, 15, 16 years old but screw him? What is she going to do? She feeling all in love. He feeling all in love. What else are they going to do? That's your fault. You let that happen. Get her prepared for college. Get her prepared for the military. Get her prepared for a trade school. That's what she needs to be concentrating on at 14, 15, 16 years old. Not some little boy's penis. He don't even know how to be a, a husband to your daughter. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? That's your fault, mama. Daddy, if you in the, in the, in the child's life, that's your, your fault. And if you let your sons date little girls at that point, you're setting him up to be a father before he's ready to be a man. That's your fault. You're doing it. Yes. So going back, how does all that tie into pedophiles? We keep dating people because we act so freaking desperate. Stop acting desperate. When a brother approaches you because you shouldn't be approaching men that's completely out of divine order. Approaching a man? Sis, where are you? Is your self-esteem that low? If he wants you, he know how to come after you. But if he wants you, he not necessarily the one. When he approaches you, if you think you feeling him, say, brother, let me get your number. I need to have a reading done. If he has a problem with that, you already know he ain't the one. Why you got to get a reading done on me? Because I don't know you and niggas lie. That's why. That's why we do. We lie. They lie. Everybody lie. You get nothing but that person's representative. It might take six months to a year for you to date that person before the representative moves out the way because they know just what to say. What does it mean when you feel that way about any and everybody you date? It means that you need to get a reading. That's what that means. That's what it means. Now, as pretty as I am, and I'm only pretty because my mama was gorgeous and my daddy is fine. I ain't have no other choice. It's in the jeans. I got nothing. You see me post pictures of my baby cousins. I got gorgeous cousins. We got good jeans. That's all it means. So pretty as I am, I should be married. It's just crazy that ain't nobody's son locked me down. Why? Because I know how to get readings now. 
because I understand the anointing that's on my life and I understand what I bring to the table. And I understand that anybody that's in my life has to be able to protect me spiritually. Now, it helps when they're fine. It really, really does. But if you can't protect me spiritually with the type of work that I'm doing, brother, I'm going to get bored with you. So if I know that, why would I sit up and waste a brother's time in a relationship when he can't protect me spiritually? I get spiritual attacks like crazy. I had one of my former teachers sit up and try to have, pay good money to have witchcraft thrown at me so that I wouldn't be able to talk. Didn't want me to teach. My hand of God, that happened. That happened. So you've got to understand the type of attack that a woman of my caliber stays under. So for a man to be my head, to be my covering, he's got to be able to protect me spiritually. I'm not going to date a broke brother. Why should I? Why should I? I'm not bringing broke to you. You're not bringing broke to me. So you've got to be able to be a provider, a protector, and the priest over the home. I've already paid for dudes. I've already done that. I've already done that. I'm not paying for no dude, baby. I'm almost 50. And I'm cute. I ain't doing all that. For what? That's crazy. If you're going to be my head and you're going to cover me, you need to be able to do that. Because I'm an excellent woman. I am. Submissive like a mob. But you got to give me something to submit to. You, I got to be able to trust your relationship with the universe. Are you kidding me? Bro, you got to be able to sit down and I need to be able to go to you. And I, want, I need to be able to say, baby, some extra money came in. Tell me, what should I invest it in? See, I need to be able to have that conversation with my man. I don't need to have to go to another man in order to have those questions answered. If you're going to be my head, if you want me to submit my will to you, I need to come to you and say, baby, something don't feel right. I've done these readings today. I worked with this client today. I need you to do some Reiki on me and get this energy up off of me. I need him to be able to come to me and say, baby, I'm seeing some things in the spirit. I know that you want to help this person, but no, that person is not dedicated to your highest and best good. And I love you too much to let you get set up to get hurt. I need him to be able to have dreams and visions concerning me to protect me. That's what I need. And I don't need to have to come out my pocket to pay for him. Because a real man is a provider, a protector, and the priest over the home. And I will not settle for anything short of any of that. So if that means that I have to continue on, because see, I've tried the settle thing. I've settled and I've settled and I've settled. And my spirit won't let me do it. It's like, you got to make a decision. You either going to do the spiritual work or you're going to do the settle. What, what is it? And the spiritual work, work wins every time. The spiritual work wins every time. That's it. So I'm content with helping you not bring pedophiles in your house. Because as I keep cleaning me up, as I keep teaching women in these online sacred medicine woman classes so they can get healed. See, I want to pass my legacy on to other women. That's the reason that I teach the classes that I do. I want you to take my mantle. I want to have a big mantle passing ceremony where I lay my hands on women and the anointing that's in my life, I pass on to them. But to see, if you ain't healed, if you jeopardizing your children behind some piece of penis, I can't trust you with my anointing. No, I can't do that. Your daughter should never say that Beyonce is her role model and you're not. If she does, you have to ask yourself why. What kind of life am I living in front of that little girl that she is all into Beyonce and she ain't in me. What kind of spiritual work am I doing with my daughter? What did you mean by if your father had a reading, he wouldn't have married your mom? It's exactly what I said and what I meant. Um, my mother <clears throat> was not a good match for my father. That's it. If my father had had a reading, 
he would not have continued to date my mother and then I would not have been conceived. It would have been through another vessel. The scars that you see on my hands, they were also all over my face. They go all the way up my arms. My mother set the house on fire and tried to kill me when I was seven years old. So had my father had a reading, then he would not have married my mother. And so 20 surgeries I would not have had to go through because of what my mother did. So that's exactly what I mean when I say, and my father's on Facebook, so I ain't got no reason to lie. My life is an open book. That's what makes me an effective teacher. I don't care. <laughs> if my testimony can help somebody else heal, then I have no problems testifying. I have no problems testifying. So I lived a lot growing up telling people that we had a house fire. And that's what I believed. When I was 20, my mother sat me down and told me and my little brother the truth. And so then at 21, I then found out about the molestation and all of that. So the fact that I'm not sitting over in a corner somewhere, rocking back and forth, licking the walls, lets you know I done been through some things. I've gotten the help I need. I've done the proper training. So I don't judge you. I don't trip on you. I don't do nothing. I am here to help you heal. That's what I meant. I knew when I seen your scars, it was a strong black one. Absolutely. And see, this is real. This is 20 surgeries later. Never had a surgery on my face. I had third degree burn scars on my entire face. Spirit healed my face. So there are things your children just don't have to go through. If you just get a reading, if you're scared to get a reading, you got to ask yourself why. Why am I scared to get a reading on this relationship? And I don't care if y'all done bought a house together. Baby, there are male pedophiles. There are female pedophiles. There are male predators. There are female predators. So just because he's not beating you now, when I do my relationship readings, they are completely different from any relationship reading that I have ever had in my life from anybody. And I've got from the best of the best. I always go to King Simon. Always. Look him up on Facebook under King Simon. S-I-M-O-N. Not Simeon. Not Solomon. Simon. He is a numerologist. He is my brother. You got his number? In your phone? Shoot. Okay. Um, and if any of my students on here, if you've got King Simon's number, post it up for me. Okay? It's in the room. I trust him to do an amazing, amazing reading. His name is King Simon. He's on Facebook. He's a numerologist. He's in New York. The brother is on the money. He's going to tell you the truth about your sign, your numbers, in thorough, in full. He's going to tell you the truth about your numbers, your sign. I can post it quick. Please do. Thank you. Um, thank you, sis. Post his number. I would get one from him. I would get one from me. My readings are $25, okay? I do a relationship reading. And in your relationship reading, I'll be glad because I usually charge $25 separate for the um, pedophile reading. But I'll just do one reading, $25. My number is 404-401-7448, 404-401-7448. Shoot me a text. Do not call because I might be doing a Facebook Live. King Simon's number, 347 496 1022 347 496 1022 text that brother okay now instagram this is getting ready to end in a minute and 30 seconds all i'm gonna do is turn right back around and start you back up again okay and i don't want you to miss anything so again to reach me for a relationship reading and let me know if you want the pedophile portion put in i'm not gonna force that on you you ask me i'll do it 404-401-7448, 404-401-7448, 404-401-7448.
401-744-8. If you're a woman and you know you need healing, so you stop attracting these types of energies to you, we get started our interviews December 1st for the Sacred Medicine Woman class. Text me and say, hey, queen, I want more information on the class. 404-401-7448. That way, you don't set yourself up in order to make those types of mistakes. You don't have to worry about your little boy getting molested. You don't have to worry about your little girl getting molested. Many of us got molested as little girls. Yes, yes, sis. She said, can I get a relationship reading even if I'm not in one? Absolutely. Before you get in one, that's the smartest way to do it. Reach out to me. Reach out to King Simon. If you don't like what I say, go over to him. If you don't like what he say, go over to me. When we both saying the same thing, you got to consider it, baby. <laughs> you got to consider it. Okay, Instagram's getting ready to end. And let's see, let me post. Hold on one second, Facebook. Share. All right, let me start Instagram again. So everybody, okay, we're on again. All right, Instagram family, we are back and we're continuing on. So it is so vitally important. Two of the main readings that I do, the relationship reading, and then the spiritual gifts reading. Do you have your packet down here? Okay. I did one for <clears throat> Sister Harmony yesterday. You get a nice little package that looks like this. And it has your name on it. And it goes through and it shows you what your primary spiritual operating system is. It breaks it all the way down so that you're clear on this is who I am. Then it tells you about your primary spiritual gifts, your secondary spiritual gifts. It breaks it all the way down. I email this to you so that you have it written. See, a real, a real reader doesn't have a problem either recording it, writing it out, typing it out, so that you, if you need to show other people, that's fine. So there's no misunderstanding. I want you to know what your giftings are. When you know what your giftings are, then you are able to be more effective. Then you're able to know, dang, that wasn't in my head. Wow, I really felt that. Wow, I really smelled that. That was, oh my gosh. You understand you better. If you are in a relationship, you understand the other person's spiritual gifts as well. If we do, and I do do couples um, spiritual gifts readings too. So this way, you may be clairvoyant. So you may get your information by seeing it. He may be clairaudient. So he may get his information by hearing it. You cannot, what method, I use several methods. I use shells, I use cards, I use pendulums. Um, I use several different methods. So I'm not stuck into just one, uh, Mama Ivy, not at all. Question Go for ahead. You. What's the question? Um, what happens if you get a relationship reading and it tells you that the person you're in a relationship is not dedicated to your best and highest good? They get a relationship reading and it says that you are dedicated to their best and highest good. Okay. So the, the sister just asked, in the relationship reading, what happens if you get a reading done that says that that person is not dedicated to your highest and best good? If your mate gets a reading done and it says that you are dedicated to their highest and best good. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. These are both accurate readings. They are not dedicated to your highest and best good. You are dedicated to their highest and best good. There is an imbalance. Hear me when I tell you, because I had to break this down to a sister and I was like, oh my God, this is not common sense. Okay. No, it didn't make her dumb. It made me aware. Because sometimes I live in my head. I'm, I'm a Virgo. 9-9 nine, nine is my birthday. So stuff is either black and white. You rarely see me in pink and gray. Because stuff is real, real black and white. So in her reading, it said that the brother was not dedicated to her highest and best good. And she said to me, well, does that mean that I, that, that I shouldn't date him? And I had to just sit with that. I was like, oh, my God. I said, sis, if a person is not dedicated to your highest and best good, they don't deserve to be around you on any level. 
You are either with me or you are against me. But I can't be sleeping with the enemy. If you're not dedicated to my highest and best good, what are we doing? Why are we, why am I expending that energy with you when I could sit up, go get myself cleansed, get some distance healing work done, get your energy out of me so that I can attract to me that which is dedicated to my highest and best good. So if they're not dedicated to your highest and best good, sis, all bets are off. You can't teach somebody to be dedicated to your highest and best good. They either are or they're not. If I got to teach you to be dedicated to my highest and best good, sis, that's too much work. That's too much work. I mean, that's like, oh, I had to teach him how to take a bath. I had to teach him how to floss. I had... Are you that desperate? No. Let's do some healing work on you so we can raise your vibration so that you can start attracting to you that which is dedicated to your highest and best good. So you stop attracting to you predators. So when you attract pedophiles and predators into your life and say you don't have children, when we do your relationship reading, you can ask me because I'm not going to just automatically do it. Let me know if this person is a predator. You see what a predator is, there are people that pray for you and there are people that prey on you. Domestic violence begins within. Domestic violence begins within. I say this as a woman who at 44 years old, okay, had never had no man lay hands on me. I got, I got a beating from two men. My daddy, when I was growing up, his frat brother, my principal, uh, Alfred Dow. Only two men in my life that had ever, 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 ever laid hands on me. And at 44, dating a, a conscious healer, I went through physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, still suffering from financial, and sexual abuse. Who does that? Who does it? But because of who he was and because of who his spiritual family was, I didn't get a reading. I said, oh, my God. He's interested in me. Look at his family. Look at who he is. I don't need a reading for this. I would be a fool. I'm just graced. He said all the right words. We did business together. We made money together. Oh my God, of course. I'm just graced. And you have a, a, a spiritual background. Of course I need to be with you. Oh my God, I'm just Oh, and look at who your mama is and look it up. Fool. If I had gotten a reading, if I had gotten a reading, then I would still have a life history of saying that I'd never had anybody lay hands on me, that I'd never had a man break a mirror over me, that I'd never gone to Nicholas Bookstore and had a man lay hands on me in front of 80 people. But see, I had to have that experience because I was a snob. I was a snob. Sisters would say to me that a brother had laid hands. And I, he did what? He put his hands on you. Why did you let him? So I had to go through it so I knew how it was done. It didn't start out with hands being laid on me. It started out with yelling at me. It started out with gaslighting. So telling me to do something and I do it. I ain't tell you to do that. Why are you doing it? And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I'm not crazy. And then it kept on happening. So then you got used to the emotional abuse and you then started kind of tiptoeing and stepping on eggshells so that you didn't upset him. I don't want to say the wrong words because I don't want to upset him. And then it became financial. So then I started being asked for money. And I'm like, oh my God, wait a minute. So the first time I said no. I said no. I, no. You, you give you some money and not no little money. Bigger money. 
I said, no, I'm not doing that. Huh? And so the family twisted it around. Like, what's wrong with you? You're supposed to be a part of our family. We have paid to move you here. You're, you're working with the family. And you don't tell what goes on in this family. <laughs> so I didn't. And then my feeling, my, uh, I got broken up with. I done been moved from my two-bedroom townhouse to their house. I say no to giving money. And then that's taken off the table. I said, okay, well, I'm going to go. Then the story changed. And so, and I have witnesses to the abuse. I have pictures of the abuse. So I'm not lying on anybody. I'm letting you all know that if I had simply had a reading, a reading, if I simply had a reading, pull up King Simon's number again, they're asking for his number. Then baby, Queen Neat wouldn't have never gone through much of what I've gone through. So if I can save you, I don't know how long I have before I transition. I take it day by day by day. And so if I can share with you and keep you from making mistakes that I've made, my little cousin Sheree is on. Hey, beautiful. Um, King Simon's number 347-496-1022. 347 347- 4961022 King Simon does all of my readings. He does all of my readings and he's never been wrong. And I pay that brother. Yeah, I sure do. I pay him. I don't use him as my uh, you know, that's my go-to. Yeah. Yep. And I drop that money in PayPal just like I'm telling you to. The brother has never been wrong. King Simon was there when I went through my abuse. So he knows I'm not lying. Now all that happened, all that happened for real. I don't hold, did you just text him? Or call? No, text him, because King Simon is doing readings all day long, and he may be on a call, text him. He will definitely get back to you. But I trust that brother. I absolutely trust that brother. He has never, never led me wrong. And he comes to me for readings too. We read for each other. We don't lead each other wrong. And he's had a chance to know what it is to not get readings on relationships. Baby, we don't have to keep hurting each other. We don't have to keep hurting each other. King Simon is the truth. I send my students. I trust that brother with my students. And my students are my tribe. I'm protective over my students. I beat you down behind my students. That's why I do interviews. I got to make sure that you worth me beating somebody down for. I'm real. I am. I am segment when it comes to my students. I do not play. I do not play. So, beloved, if you don't know. If you don't know. Oh, let me. This is one of the things I need to say. Because I didn't know this wasn't common sense. It is inappropriate for your boyfriend. I said your boyfriend to walk around the house in his boxer shorts around your children, male or female. That is inappropriate. First of all, why is he shacking up in your house and you have children and you ain't got no ring on your finger, a wedding band? He ain't got nowhere to live? Was he living with his mama or his ex-girlfriend before he came to you? Why is he shacked up in your house? What's wrong with you? What's wrong? Are you that desperate? And you're not that horny, sis. You can satisfy yourself before you sit up. Because what type of example are you setting for your daughters? What type of example are you setting for your daughter? Get, cook for him. Wash his drawers. Be his freak. Do all of that. Audition like crazy. And then maybe he'll marry you. Are you kidding me? You cheapened yourself. And if you unfriend me, if you stop being my student, baby, whatever. I'm going to speak this truth. This is, this is what the universe has caused me, called me to do, period. It's what the universe has called me to do. If you didn't hear the teaching, if go on my page, go to Hydea Barbell's page, go to Tanya Johnston's page. Please, somebody put them names in there, okay? Without a question. 
We did a teaching this past Sunday that was a Sacred Soul Sunday, and I taught about abortions. I do post-abortion healing clinics here. Sisters, a lot of you all need to have a post-abortion healing clinic done, either with a group of other sisters or independently, because you got the energy of a dead baby inside of your womb. Just because we get up off of a table, and I did it at 19, so I'm not talking to you about nothing I ain't done. When you get up off that table, all they did was take that child's bones and that child's blood and their physical body. But that spiritual being is still inside of you. Please reach out to me so that I can help you. No, it's not free. Let me show you why. Take this phone. We get ready to turn it around so that these people can understand. Uh, you know how to press the little button right there to turn around? I'm going to show you why I don't do nothing for free. Unless Spirit tell me to. I want you to look at this wall. And I'm not being braggadocious. But this is one eighth of the certification courses that I've been through. Okay? Make it so they can see it. Alright? I'm not just some little regular general person. Okay? So I have done the necessary study and work in order to serve you. Miscarriages, sis, we definitely do special work for miscarriages because again, the energy of that dead baby is still inside of you. Please reach out to me, okay? We do uh, miscarriages a little different because see, you've got to forgive the universe for any hatred and anger that you've had toward the universe for that baby miscarrying. I had a woman that was amazing and her baby, we had just, I'll never forget it. I'm going mm. to try not to cry on this one. We had just done her baby shower. She was eight months pregnant. And about two weeks later, she didn't feel her baby kick anymore. So that baby died inside of her. Fully developed, eight months, that's a fully developed baby. That's the, the lungs is the last thing that's developing. And so... She had to lay down and have that dead baby. And she's never to this day, that's been 20 years ago, she's never been the same. So some of you all have had miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage, and then you turn around and try to do in vitro fertilization. When you keep miscarrying, you might need to have a reading done to see if you and that person are supposed to come together and have a baby. See, if you didn't get a relationship reading done before you got into the relationship, before you got married, and you keep on trying to have a baby, and keep trying to have a baby, and keep trying to have a baby, and the babies die, and the babies die, and the babies die, we need to check. Before you spend $16,000 on vitro fertilization, Baby, you need to find out if your DNA and his DNA ever need to come together to make anything. Okay? That's for real. I'm not telling you to leave him. I'm telling you, baby, if the universe keeps causing you to miscarry, there may be something in that genetic combination that could produce the next serial killer. That could produce somebody very, very imbalanced. That spirit simply does not want to come to this earth realm. And so you keep begging to get pregnant. And the universe is like, baby, no. No. Mm -mm. Now, I'm also a certified health and wellness coach. Okay? So if after we do the reading, because see, I do everything led by spirit. I could care less about popularity. If spirit says yes you are supposed to bring forth life with this man and you have physical blocks, he's got physical blocks, then we start working on some of my herbal formulations in order to help you. We start to move some of the energetic blocks out of your body. Many of us that have gone through molestation, that mental block is so big, it blocks your womb. So can no baby live up in there. And so then we start to change, especially if you're an older sister. See, I still can have a baby. My womb is very, very, very fertile. Okay? Let's get it clear. 
now that I got all the hurt, the pain, the fibroids, everything out of it, I can have a baby at any time. Do I want to have a baby? Sure. Why? Because I got 60 students. And I'm going to take the babies over there. And they can figure out the, the diaper thing and the bottle thing and all of those things. Because I don't know how to do all that. No, last diaper I changed is 43 years old now. Uh-uh. So, but I can still have a baby now. Okay? So if you're an older sister who still desires to have babies, please give me a call. We can help to not only reverse the age of your womb, we can get that damage up out of you so that if you desire to have a baby, how did I do it? Sis, text me. I do uh, fibroid, fibroid free clinics as well. They're not free. <laughs> fibroid free. How to get rid of fibroids. And it's so deep because a lot of us don't realize who's still sleeping in our wombs. The people that are still sleeping in our wombs are a lot of the reason we have PCOS, we have fibrocystic breast, fibroid tumors, all types of cancers, all types of things that are up inside of our bodies. I work with all of that. I also work with you in counseling. One of the degrees I'm working on right now is forensic psychiatry, psychology. I will be a psychiatrist by the time I'm 55. I'm working on a double doctorate in naturopathic medicine as well. So I keep myself continuing to study, continuing to grow, continuing to come better, to get more modalities to, to, modalities to be able to help to heal you. What services do you have for internationals? Oh, sweetie, we do everything. I can't do the two things I can't do. The Yoni Steam, I can't do that international only because I need your Yoni here in order to do it, okay? And we do a womb clearing as well, which is off the charts. Um, I also can't do um, something else. What they got to be here for? They got to be here for the, uh, oh, the post-abortion healing clinics. I can't do that internationally because that's physical work that I have to do hands-on for you here. But everything else, I can do distant. So we can do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, FaceTime. I have 9,000 webinar options. I can do all of that. Uh, give me, I don't really like to discuss pricing over the uh, internet, sis. So if you can text me or inbox me, 404-401-7448. 404-401-7448 that I can give you pricing. And this is the reason. Um, everything I do has levels. So like you were asking about the Yoni Steam, I have a Yoni Steam. All of my Yoni Steams come with a clearing. But we also have a Yoni Steam that has a clearing. And if you got enough up inside of you, we may have to do a spiritual bath with you as well. So I do a little mini consult to see what you really need. That's why you got to come here in person. All right. Cause it's not a game. It's not a game this weekend. We're doing, um, a thing to remove your mask. So all the mask we've learned to wear. So that's going to be your, um, what is it, baby? They're doing a aura flush. You're going to do a, a chakra flush. Look, it's up there on my certificate. Oh, and then we do a chakra repair because as much damage as you get to all of your chakras, sometimes, baby, your chakras are not spinning at all. They're just sitting there like they do in people that are dead. They're just sitting there because all you're doing is existing. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I just finished saying Text me. Do not call me. It breaks up the Facebook Live. And then what happens? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, text me. You can text me 24 hours a day. Now, keep in mind, since I've been on here, I've gotten about 170 texts. <laughs> I'm not getting ready to answer all of those texts right away. So, I'm going to answer each one of them, it really is me. I don't have my assistants turning around answering because your stuff is too important to me. But are you getting ready to get instantaneous answers right this minute? No. So don't go on your little Facebook page talking, I text her and she ain't text me back. Sit down. I am definitely going to respond to you. Okay?
So relationship readings, friendship readings. Some of you need to get readings on the people you call friends. I know it wasn't you, Kiki. I know you didn't do it, pumpkin. Kiki like, it wasn't me, girl. Uh-uh, queen. That wasn't me. Don't read on me. That was not you, Kiki. So some of you need to, where do we access your webinars for those of us that are out of state? Text me because we need to set up a service so that we can do a webinar, okay? So if you are hurting, if you know you need counseling, if you have been lying to yourself for years and you finally want to connect with your most authentic self, we have a new class starting. Look at the date for the first Sunday in September in, in January for me. We got a new class uh, and it's a it's supposed to be a 52 week online sacred medicine woman course. Now, it may be extended. What's that date? It's the 7th. January 7th is when the class is going to start. It's early, early, early in the morning, so you ain't got no excuses. You ain't going to be in church. You ain't going to be at the temple. You ain't going to be nowhere. You need to be on Facebook Live in our private room doing the class. Okay? Okay. So, interviews begin December 1st. I love you. Oh, I love you too, pumpkin. Yay! So, interviews begin December 1st. Yes, God, I interview because I know my crazy level. There are so because my mama was crazy, okay? So I know I'm like, okay, so this is the crazy scale. I can go about to right there. Once you go one notch over that, I have priests and priestesses who I'm accountable to, and I will refer you to them. Because I know where my crazy ends. I also know that I have crazy that lives within me. So I can't have your crazy activate my crazy. I will refer you over to the priest and priestesses. Okay? Somebody asked me if I work with children. I do. I do. Because of all that I went through as a child, I work very, very well with children. Very well with children. So if you have... A child that has gone through traumas, I am a good person to help you with your child. I really am. I do help families get back together. If you have a daughter, because I saw this, I've seen this twice in my life, and it just, I'd be like, wow. Because see, I was scared of my mama. I was. Certain things I didn't bring to my mama, I didn't bring to my daddy. Because I knew, I didn't know that my mama was crazy, but you know how you know your mama crazy. So I heard this little girl tell her mama that she hated her to her face. I'm like, oh, my God. And I just sat there like, oh, that, that mama get ready to go to jail. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, she, she, they about to take her. Mm -hmm. The little people are going to take her. And so I watched the mama just cry. And she looked like us, brown. A brown mama just cried. Didn't knock the child on the floor or nothing. I said, wow. And so it made me start working with teenage girls who would say, because say I worked with Junior Achievement for years. They paid for my college. I'm so grateful for Junior Achievement. It was the best thing since sliced bread. It made college a joke. If you can get your kids involved in Junior Achievement, baby, it is everything. It did. My first two years of college were a joke. I already went almost as a second semester sophomore because I had so many AP classes. But everything I learned with business, marketing, finances, uh, I learned through junior achievement beginning in the seventh grade. So I went to st stats, quant, uh, econ. It was a joke. I ain't never studied. Anyway, so what was I saying? It was important before I got into that. The teenagers. So I started dealing with teenage girls, y'all. And so they would say, huh, I hate my mama. I said, baby, come here. Talk to me now. You hate your mama. And you told her that to your face. Tell me why you hate your mama. She don't let me go to the mall. With her money? <laughs> okay, why else you hate your mama? She always in my business. And so what I do, because see, I'm not ashamed. I roll up my sleeves. And I say, baby, I want you to see. Okay, this ain't no game. This ain't no joke. This 20 surgeries later. And I say, you hate your mama. Let me tell you a little story. 
And I just tell them the truth. And most of them start crying and they go back to their mama and they apologize because they understand the difference. So yeah, I work with your children. Now I'm gonna tell you what now, if you got little disrespectful children, I don't do disrespectful children. I don't do it. I don't have to. That's certain things. I don't do disrespect for my students. I sure don't. Anytime you feel like you can just pop out your mouth to me, we're not going to get along. Keep your money. It don't mean that much to me because I love and respect me. And I love and approve of myself. But if you have children who are seriously hurt, harmed, and need to talk, I do well with kids. I do. I just do. And it could be because, see, I had an abortion at 19. I never, ever knew that by 48, I'd not have any children. So in me having that connection and in me reconciling the death in my womb from my baby, I connect really well with children. So I don't mind doing that. And then I bring the family together. Because my parents got a divorce. And I was grown and it deeply affected me because my parents never argued in front of us. So I didn't know they were having problems. My little brother, it deeply affected because he was still there in the house. And so I know how when parents have gotten divorced to work with the child so that child can heal. Because see, a lot of us never would have got a divorce if we never got married. And if we got a relationship reading, we'd have never got married. It's really that simple. Once you know better, you simply do better. Staying in a relationship for the sake of a child is child abuse. That is domestic violence. Especially when you're unhappy. Children are returning ancestors. They can tell when you're miserable. They can tell when you're unhappy. Do you know how many sisters I've dealt with that have committed suicide because they felt like they were stuck in a relationship because of their church upbringing, they didn't want to leave the relationship, so they said, you know what? I can't keep doing this. My child is six. I can't imagine another 12 years of going through this. So I'm going to just leave. I'm going to fully disconnect. It's real, real deep, y'all. Some of the students that I've worked with that have AIDS, that have different diseases, they, herpes that they can't get rid of, Many of them have wanted to commit suicide because they're like, I feel like I got a life sentence because I trusted somebody. I feel like I got a life sentence because I trusted somebody. And then I have a lot of sisters that have children by several different fathers. And they're like, you know what? Ain't nobody going to marry me. My kids will be better off with my mama. Let me just get out. So see, I understand that. I tried to commit suicide the first time when I was eight years old. Can't still see those scars, but they're still there. So I can relate to you. I'm so grateful I would not redo my life in any way. I'm grateful for everything I've been through because it makes me a more effective healer. I appreciate all them pieces of paper up there. I appreciate having more degrees than a thermometer, but my life experience has helped me to be able to be a more effective healer. So I love all of you. If you need a relationship reading, if you wanna know about your spiritual gifts, I also do full life readings. Keep in mind, I am doing a retreat that started last night and is going through the next Tuesday, okay? So it may take me a minute to get back to you, but please know, I'ma get back to you. Queen got you. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. We are doing a um, national day of mourning and we're doing a sweat lodge. So some of y'all, I'll be responding, not responding to you, definitely have a response before then. But if I'm doing your reading, I got to type that up. So give me the grace of time. You do have to pay for the readings. The readings are $25 and I will send you my PayPal link. No, I'm not going to do your reading until you pay me. Because after I do your reading, you have no reason to pay me. I ain't stupid. I'm not just pretty. So, I want you to have the information you need. I want you not to make the mistakes that I've made. When a simple reading can help you. 
So again, if you're interested in the Sacred Medicine Woman class, the interviews start December 1st. Sweetie, we have retreats every year, every month. The next one is, de is uh, December 21st through the 24th. We will be doing a post-abortion healing clinic during that time period. You can do those separate. You can do it with the rest of the group. And then I'm doing individual modalities. So we'll see what you need, and I'll be working on you independently. All of those happen in Atlanta here at the Temple of Sekhmet. I will be doing a retreat in Vegas, uh, February 15th through the 19th, and I've been invited uh, to the UK, so I'll be going out to the UK, I'll be over in Amsterdam as well. I want you to heal, that's all I want. For the time that I have here, that's all I want to do is see people get well, that's it. So we're doing a retreat right now. We have another one coming up December 21st through the 24th. The weekend of February 24th and 25th, uh, we're doing a Goddess Glow Up. Sister Hadia Barbell, H-A-D-I-I-Y-A. H-A-D-I-I-Y-A. Hadia Barbell, B-A-R-B-E-L. B-A-R-B-E-L. She and uh, the rapper Soleil, Tanya Johnston, and I will be uh, doing a goddess glow up in Washington, D.C., in the Latham, Maryland area. Very excited about that. That'll be the weekend of February 24th and 25th. And so continue to reach out. If you're not my friend on Facebook, uh, somebody put my information in there, Alicia, A-L-I-S-H-A. Queen Neat, N-E-I-T-H, Kyer, K-I-E-R. I am accepting friends on Facebook. But if my spirit says no, I ain't going to accept you and don't feel away. You can always follow me. And then if you're a stalker, then I'll have you unfollowed. On uh, Instagram, Queen underscore Neat, N-E-I-T-H underscore A-T-L. Queen underscore Neat, N E I T H underscore A T L. And you can follow me. So I'm so grateful, Mother, Father, Creator, thank you. Thank you for guiding my mouth. Thank you for allowing me to share this enemy, uh, this enemy, this energy with my sisters, with my brothers, so that they know the enemies within and the enemies without. Thank you. I stand in such gratitude. Speak to those who this was needed for. If there are children that are in jeopardy, speak to the parents. Speak to the parents. If there are teachers that are mistreating children, speak to the parents. Help them to incline their ears to you. Mother, Father, Creator, we are grateful. Ashe, Amen Ra, Mayat. Thank you all for allowing me to have this time with you. This was not what I woke up <laughs> intending, but not my will, but the Creatress's will be done. There are some, I've been invited to speak in New York at Nicholas Bookstore. And I'll definitely, if I'm in New York, I'll definitely be in New Jersey at my home temple, the Temple of um, Anu. So I want you well. And I definitely plan to come up to Jersey. We have a beautiful facility up there in Newark where we can do all of the modalities. I get in my truck and ride up the road and we'll bring the post-abortion healing clinic there if they'll let me. We'll bring the Yoni Steam there and we'll help you to heal. We'll do the parasite purge. That's something else they have to be here for too. That's it, the parasite purge. We help you to get rid of the parasites in your body because if you have parasites in your body, you're attracting parasitical relationships to you. So you wonder why people just keep on using you? It's because you've allowed parasites in your body. One piece of pork in your whole life can leave you with parasites. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for all of the love. Queen Neat loves hearts. So if you just shoot me some hearts and let me know that you enjoyed this or that you got anything out of it, it means the world to me. Again, my contact information on Instagram, queen underscore neat, N-E-I-T-H 
underscore ATL, Queen underscore Neat underscore ATL. On Facebook, Alicia, A-L-I-S-H-A, Queen Neat, Kyer, K-I-E-R. I thank you. I'm grateful for you. I hope some of you all will interview. If you don't make it this time, we have another one, if the, if the Most High say so, uh, starting in March. But I want to get you taken care of. I want to get you the help you need. And if I don't have it, I know where to send you. Thank you for your time this morning. Shimmy M. Hetepu.